I'm going to go through the 460 MRSA today. That is a device that we have that moves ASCII data between a uh, between a Modbus RTU slave, which is the 485 version of Modbus, and an ASCII device. What I have hooked up on my desktop here is I have a 460 MRSA and I have a crossover cable to my PC and I've configured my PC so that it's on a particular subnet and it's on this on the sub it is on subnet 192.168.47.77 my uh, PC is a dot one and the device we're working with is 47.77 so if I hit enter and the web page for the, our device comes up. Now this is the main page. There's actually five things that you can you can modify, and that's this main panel right here. There's an application description, so we can put in a uh, a test so that you can when you go to a web page, you'll always know what you're looking at. So we're going to say this is the Camtasia test system. Then you can put in whatever you want. You got up to 80 characters, so we save that. We go back to the main page now. It, it, the description's loaded. The s second thing of the pan on the panel here that we can we can modify is the network setup. That's essentially just the address of the unit. It's like any other uh, setup. And uh, current address is 192.168, and we're free to go in and modify this to whatever we want. When you get the unit, it's going to be 192.168.100.0.100. And it'll say right on our documentation what that address is. You'll need to set your PC up to be on that same subnet, 192.168.0.1, for example. And then you'll be able to talk with using a crossover cable directly to this or using a switch. Uh, you can also talk to it. So I'm going to cancel this edit because we don't need to change the IP address at this point in time. The second thing, the third thing we do now is we, we select the communication modules. What we find, though, is that there's only two communication modules uh, to select. Everything else is grayed out, can't be changed. Modbus RTU is selected, and the serial module is selected because that's what we're doing. We're moving serial ASCII in and out of a Modbus RTU slave. So this serial module, we're going to go ahead and edit that and configure. This is the next step that you would do: is configure the serial module. Well, okay, what do we got? We've got we've now now we can enable it and unenable it, and we want to we want it enabled. The maximum message length, this is the maximum number of characters that you have coming in on ASCII. Okay, and that's set to 255. If it's less than that, it doesn't matter. So there's no particular reason to, to use that, to change that. Receive character timeout. Receive character timeout is how long to wait before um, essentially identifying a message. Most that's not good to use that because it can easily get out of sync. So many people don't use that. Leave it at zero to disable it. The way you could use that is say if you knew that every hundred milliseconds you're going to get in some number of characters and whatever character, then that's the message that you want to move into the PLC. Then you would set this to a hundred milliseconds. But generally that doesn't work very well uh, if if you have characters that come in at different times, as you would with say a barcode reader. What works better is to select delimiters. So we would say, for instance, that every time you uh, you start, you're going to start off with a dollar sign on the message coming in, and you could have a second character. We're not going to select a second one, but we're going to say every message starts with a di a dollar sign and it ends with a carriage return followed by a line feed. Okay, so now that configures our incoming messages. Now when we send messages, when we get data from Modbus RTU, we want to send it out, we have to pick the same kind of stuff. We're going to say, we're going to we want the module to encode, instead of a dollar sign this time, we want the module to encode, say, a pound sign on messages going out. In fact, we're going to have it set up a pound sign and a Q on messages going out. And then we're going to also end it with a carriage return and a line feed. Uh, carriage returns up here, and then the second character is a line feed. So if the, if we got in the characters A, B, C from Modbus R to you, we would attach a pound sign. We would send a pound sign, a Q, the A, B, C, then the carriage return, then the line feed. So that's how you use the outgoing messages. Same thing on the input. If we got A, B, C, we, if we got dollar sign space, A, B, C, carriage return, line feed. 
we would here, oh, I checked, I'm going to check discard all delimiters, so we would get rid of the dollar sign, we would get rid of the character, and get rid of the line feed, and we would just send ABC in the message back to the serial mod, to the Modbus module. Now there's some physical aspects of the serial module we have to deal with. We're going to use the DB9 port, it's going to be RS-232, so we'll have that. We've got to set the baud rate, which is now at 9600, number of data bits, which is 8, we're not going to use any parity, we're going to have one stop bit, and we're going to save that. So now, we're, so now we've got that all taken care of, all that stuff has been locked in. And now we're going to go and we're going to edit the, the configuration of the Modbus RTU slave, of our Modbus RTU slave. So we're going to be address, in this case, address 5. It could be whatever address you want. We're going to connect to Modbus on the T strip. That's going to be a 485 connection. Note that these can't be the same. If this is 485, the ASCII has to be serial. We can't have two 485s with this particular version of hardware. Same thing as before, we have to pick a baud rate, data bits, parity, stop bits, and we'll save that. And now we'll return to the main page. So, so that set up the, the communication modules. Now, do we st we, uh, there's no c server configuration, module configuration that we need to do. We have already done. There's no specific slaves or other additional configuration. That's what this module would be. That's, uh, so there's nothing to do there. We come to this. All this really tells us, though, is the coil is the address space of this Modbus slave. It goes from 401 to 800. Go back to the main page. And now the last thing to configure is a is handshaking. There's a lot of stuff in the user guide about handshaking, but basically what it is is um, if you want to only send one message, if you want to send one message for every Modbus RTU message you get in, then uh, you'll need to check this box. So this says for every Modbus RTU to ASCII, we're going to send one particular message. So if you got ABC, that would go out on the serial link once. If you uncheck that, you got ABC from this Modbus RTU message. Every time it wrote ABC, we would send it out the ASCII port again and again and again and again. Same thing on incoming messages. Every time data goes off, if we bring in ABC from the ASCII network on the Modbus, in the Modbus registers, we would put ABC. Next time it does a read, we put we'd send ABC. The next time the Master does a read, we send ABC again. Unless we check it, then it only sends it once. So that's something you'll need to know whether your application wants to support that or not. Pl but I encourage you to go and read the user guide because there's a lot more information about this kind of handshaking. Then we go back to the main page. There's a status and summary screen on the main page. The status and summary screen, because I'm not actively talking right now, doesn't show very much. But you can uh, look at what the actual status of the device is at any point in time. Uh, I'm just going to go back because we're not connected here. I'm not going to do that. But you select a particular device and it'll give you detailed information about that device. Now again here you'll see what the input buffer is for the Modbus RTU slave and what the output buffer. So from the master side it's going to write to 40,401 through 40,000, whatever it is here, uh, 40,800. So we can write all those, th I think it's 200 words. Yeah, 200 words. And then there's uh, the same thing on, uh, it can read, I'm sorry, that's the input area. It's going to read from there and it's going to write to 40,001 through for 200 words. Right now, here's, this is important. On status, it says it's enabled and not connected. It'll also give you all the message counts here. Uh, and and it also has uh, ten, 10 words of status data. And all the same stuff, exactly what these things are, is documented in, in our user guide. So we go back to the main page. The last thing you'll always want to do, the visualization is here, but uh, that's actually something that's an add-on that you, have, you can talk to us about. And then there's some utility stuff that you really don't need to address uh, unless you're directed by someone here at the factory. So uh, the last thing that I would do is probably I would unplug it, plug it back in to, um, in fact, let's do that. I'll plug it, unplug it, plug it back in, boot up, make sure all these parameters are saved. Then I'm going to hit F5 to do a refresh on this module, and it'll probably take just a minute. And there we are.